Stanford. All right, so welcome to, to the webinar class 205. I'm glad that all of you were able to attend. Tonight we're just kind of give you an overview of uh, the SEA, uh, kind of an, a look at uh, some of the the commonly asked questions that you have that a lot of students have at the beginning of the course and we're going to try to give you some pointers and some keys to success here so let's get moving so tonight we're going to talk about navigating blackboard we're going to talk a little bit about three-part communications discussion board overview and keys to success I have a question here already I have a question about the DB formatting I type it in, up using the APA format in Word, cut and paste, and the format disappears. All right, so, um, yeah. I'll, I'll cover that with him uh, in private. Go ahead and, uh, and continue on. All right, sounds good. I was going to say we're going to uh, cover that probably a little more and touch on that in the discussion board section, so hold on to that question. If others have questions like that, that's a good way to get us started. Thank you. All right, so let's move on to the next. So let's talk about navigating Blackboard. Uh, I'm going to show you, you know, an announcements where we put those up, uh, where you assign all the assignment areas, uh, talk about the schedule, quizzes, exams, resources, and grades. So let me, let me drag my Blackboard page over here so that everybody can see it. So... And come on, there it is. Okay. So when you log in, my view is a little bit different than yours. I'm going to switch over to student view so you can see, I can share with you kind of what it looks like from your perspective. So you should have a view similar to this when you log in. And so one of the things that you're going to see is announcements. These were all those emails that you get overwhelmed with uh, in your email box. Uh, these are some of the announcements that we posted. So if you can see them online, uh, in your emails and you forget where it was, come to the announcement page right at the beginning and you might be able to follow up and find it there. Okay. Uh, next thing I want to go with real quick is assignments. So we've got a couple of places to find assignments. You have your weekly lessons and major assignments. And then you have your calendar. You can find links for assignments in all three of these areas. Let's start with weekly lessons. This is pretty self-explanatory. Week one, week two, week three. Let's just go into week one because you've done this already. It shows you each week you should have kind of like a checklist of items that to go over. What's due this week? And then you have what's coming up down here at the bottom. Right? You also you can have your learning objectives, all the reading you're supposed to do, some lecture material. Looking ahead, if you click on lecture material, you should pull up all the little videos that you're supposed to watch this week. All right. Required reading gives you all the stuff you can read. These are things, most of these you can download and read offline and not have to have an a, uh, open uh, web connection for that. And then this is what uh, a lot of students get hung up on is they, they don't look... They, they missed the what's coming up next week. So we, we have a little tab here to kind of show you what's coming up in the next week, what you can expect for the next week's reading load and, and stuff. All right. So let's go back to the weekly lessons. Let's look at what's going on in week two. Again, here's a checklist. And for those of you that like checklists, you can download it, print it out, stick it in on next to your computer or what have you just have it ready and available. And you see we still have the same menu on the side, all the things that you have coming up this week. Right. And each week you get the same thing. So if you're ever lost, go here and figure out what's going on this week. And then don't be afraid to look ahead. Um, our deadlines, you see 0700 on Monday. Most of our deadlines, if it's an assignment like an essay or a quiz, or an exam, or some capstone milestone, those are typically due at 0700 Eastern Time. Not the day of that it says. So 0700 that morning, if it's after 0700, it's going to be counted as late 
and very likely will result in an academic failure. All right, so be very aware of due dates and due times. Okay. All right, let's go back to weekly lessons. All right, we've got all all the online portion here, and the admin week. So any questions about travel and stuff, you might find down here in the admin week. All right, so you got the information center flying in the Providence and wikis. So if you go to your wikis, you're going to, I don't have one here because mine doesn't have the full student page on it like yours does, but you should have your wiki for your group where it provides your name, address, phone number, all that stuff. You're also going to find a diploma wiki, and this diploma wiki is going to be the one that you put in your your rank, your rate, your uh, whatever you're called, whether it's senior chief, petty, you know, uh, master chief, master sergeant, senior master sergeant, what have you, you're going to put that on there. Put your name how you want it on your diploma, the whole nine yards. If, if you don't put that on there, your diploma is going to be written out in the way that you, in the name and the rank and all that that you register. So if you picked up master chief while you're in this class, um, and you're registered under senior chief, you could wind up having a diploma that says senior chief. So uh, you should see an announcement, if you haven't seen it already, from uh, our front office saying, hey, go in and update the wiki. All right. And let's go back to weekly lessons. So if you haven't had a chance to go in here, let's go back to admin week real quick. The Information Center, let's open up the Information Center real quick. And here's points of contact. If, if you need to ask questions about admin, about registration, hold on. we have some other little uh, like uh, heritage stuff here for you to leave your legacy back here. Uh, if you want a flag phone while you're here, there's some information about that. Um, some students like to order class rings. This is... Um, done through the Senior Enlisted Academy Alumni Association. There's an order form and there'll be somebody here when you come in house to talk to you more about that. All right, so this is a very good place to go for that information. Let's take a look at major assignments. This is where you can find all your essays. Uh, obviously you're working on the ethics essay. I hope everybody's having uh, some success right now with that. Um, this is where you're going to find the practical exercise. The practical exercise is the instructions, but this is what you need to do. The, tell you all the requirements for the assignment. If you haven't read that, you're going to miss something important. I guarantee you, all right? And it will reflect, all right? The, the resources like the encyclopedia will provide that for you there. Um, some directions, you, should provide, you need to provide a topic that you want to pick and your FA will tell you that. An example of what an outline is supposed to look like, and then the essay rubric. Basically, how we're going to grade you, what are the criteria. You can download that. You can use that as a guide as you're reviewing your, your work to see if you're, you know, any wickets that you're, you're not making. Right? So let's say you need to post, you're ready to post a, an, an essay. You can come up here and click on this ethics essay link, and it will open up Safe Assign. And this is where you can upload it. You can attach a file, which is what you should do. We prefer that you attach a doc, a Word doc. It'll take all these other files, but if you, the Word doc, some f f form of Word doc, is what we were, what we would rather you uh, upload. Okay. You can also have, get a, a picture of the uh, rubric here as well. Okay. One important thing to note about uploading assignments, essays into Save Assign. You can upload as many as you want. Every essay has a similarity check. And uh, so when you you can upload it to check similarity and make sure that you're you're at or below the similar the max similarity that is required by the practical exercise. So you can have 15 uploads in here. Uh, as you're checking as you go along, right? And as you make correction, you can upload it again and check it. 
if at any time you upload it and it seems like it's taking a, a really super long time to um, get the similarity back, you need to go up to the very top corner, and you can't see it in this view. Let me exit, and I'll show you what it looks like in the regular view. Come on. All right, so this little button at the top, this on-off button on the top right, if you click on that, completely log out, and then log back in, your similarity should show up. Okay, go back to major assignments. All right, so that's your ethics essay. You have your group capstone project. This is a project for the whole group. All right, milestone one and milestone two is the written portion of this project. When you come in house, you're going to have a a oral part of it, a presentation and a brief. All right, so it's all based off your written portion. All right, and your same rules apply. You have a you have the, the practical exercise, which are the instructions, how to do it. Your capstone topic that's assigned by your FA. Student roles, you should be figuring that out in your group. Who's going to do what? All right. Everybody should have a role and everybody should participate. This is a group project. Your group is depend your your grade is dependent on everybody's participation. So your group is going to get out of what the group puts into it. All right, so this is a great opportunity to work together as a team, kind of get to know each other, uh, and uh, and you know really work on that coordination piece. Okay. And then here's where you upload your capstone essay, and then this talks about the brief, and we can go on down here. And you have your military heritage essay. Each one of these, with the exception of the capstone, you need to uh, request uh, approval for your topic. All right. And your FAs will talk to you more about that individually, about how they want that submitted. Let's take a quick look at the calendar. All right, so this is the calendar. The links for these assignments can be found on the calendar as well. So what's coming due next Monday, or the Monday the 23rd, the 20th? So we have class 205, week 3, at 7 a.m., Ethics essay is due, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Capstone rolls are due, 0700 Eastern Time. And the ethics essay is due, again, it says 7 a.m. So let's click on this ethics essay real quick and see what happens. It opens up. You can see what it says. Cancel. And let's click on this one down here. Same thing. Oh, look, you can edit the assignment. Come in here. You should be able to... Click on this and it'll, excuse me, you can upload from here too. If you can't, go back to your major assignments. If you have any troubles, communicate with your FA ahead of time. All right? If you're doing it at 0659 and you're having troubles, you're, you're, you've waited too long. So you need to communicate early and often with your FA when it comes to uh, any troubles with Blackboard because we might be able to help you out ahead of time. or um, help you with an alternate method if we need to. All right, we can, our, our, our goal here is to help you succeed and not to fail you out. So just keep that in mind, okay? What's next? So quizzes and exam. Let's go down the list here. Quizzes and exams. Here we go, quizzes and exams. Quiz one, quiz two. All right. Pay careful attention to the, to the warning here. There's a time limit for these. If you start a quiz and you got in there by accident and you hit submit at all, it's going to count whether you answered one question or all the questions and whether you got them right or wrong. It's going to count. Quiz one is feedback only. Quiz two actually counts for a grade. So if you go in there and you make an attempt and you, you, you're you goofing around and accidentally hit submit, um, Number one, you're not going to be able to open it again if you don't. Uh, if you're having issues, contact your FA. But it does have a time limit, hour and 30 minutes. So if you're going to start, be prepared to start when you when you do your quiz. Hey Dale, let me let me just throw in here um, yeah. that um, the the quizzes are individual work only. And while we yes. we do ask you to do some collaboration, certainly on the discussion boards. 
and in the group projects, um, what we don't want you to do is collaborate on the quiz answers. So That's a, uh, just throw that out there. Yeah, thanks a lot, Bill. I was, uh, I'm was i glad you mentioned that. Yes, we love, it. we love to have our groups collaborate with each other on everything except exams and quizzes. All right, you gotta, that one you got to earn your own grade. All right, but uh, bouncing your uh, ex your uh, essays off of each other to get some peer review on those, great strategy. All right, we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next section here. All right, so let's wrap this uh, up here. So let's go to writing resources. This is this is probably the second most important place you can go besides your assignment tabs. All right, you've got. Mastering APA style, three-part comms, you have the library in case you don't have access to um, some kind of college website or some database that you can do your own, uh, research for your topics, you can come to the, to the library and access online journals and you know, a lot of good academic resources. And then you have links to uh, online writing websites. And Excuse me, sir. Is, um, yeah. Can you hear me? I can. Uh, this is Chief Newmeyer. I just <clears throat> have a question about the quizzes and the final exam. Are those open book or closed book? The quizzes are open book. The ex final exam is closed book. Okay, great. The, fi the final exam you'll do in-house. Oh, right. That's during the residence portion. Yep. And are there study guides that go out before the quizzes at all? No, not the quizzes. It's all based on the the materials that you worked up to that point. So quiz one covers all the stuff from the week weekly assignments prior to the quiz due date and the same thing for quiz two, everything from up to that point. All right? All right, thank you. You're welcome. Good question. Thanks for asking it. All right. We'll we'll poke around in these a little bit more in the next section when we talk about three part comms. But if you're struggling with APA or three-part comms, come here and check these sections out. There's lots of good stuff. If you're not a, not an avid writer, you know, or a, uh, not comfortable with uh, uh, writing academically academic papers, check these online websites out too. They're very good resources. Next thing, we'll look at the grades. So let me go back to student mode real quick. And here we go in student mode. All right, so you'll see view my grades. If you click on view my grades, it'll list all your weeks, right? And you can come in here and see what's been graded, what's come and due, what's been submitted, right? All the way in the far right, you should be able to see what your grade is, if it's been posted or not, all right? You also see with your essays, it also provides a rubric down here. Right. You should be getting a rubric, either the online version, or your FA may send you uh, a downloadable version. All right, depending on uh, how they how they their approach to grading your your papers. Right, the requirements are all the same. We just have a completely online option, and then some FAs like to download your papers and mark it on a uh, on downloadable rubric that they can send you with uh, notes on it as well. So um, either way, it'll be the, uh, the grades and the requirements are the same. I've got a question here about can we email you an example of a previous study guide or two? And uh, I got it, Dale. No okay. Worries. Yep. Cool. Thank you very much. All right. So this covers grades. So hopefully uh, you've had some time to play around with all these uh, sections. Um, let's look at this whole class discussion real quick. This water cooler. There's a lot of good information in here. This is a great place for you to just put a question out to the class. Um, maybe somebody's got an answer for you. Right? This is a great place to go and ask questions and answer questions and see what's going on. All right. Plus, we post the some feedback from the previous class as well, some pointers, some good, you know, hey, here's what you should think about doing. This is some, some good best practices 
for while you're going through. So if you haven't looked at the water cooler yet, get in there and poke around at that and see what other people have to say. See if there's if someone has the same questions you have. This is a great place to find that information. All right. Alrighty. So let's minimize this for now, and let's go to the next slide. This part that everybody's probably been waiting for. Three-part comms. I'm going to talk a little bit about three-part communications basics, the SEA APA format, outlines, and similarity. All right, so let's go back to our there. So three-part communications. This is something that gives folks fits. And the part of the problem that it gives people fits is that it doesn't feel natural to some people, you know, especially if you are like me when I came through. Um, I just finished up a college degree. I was very, very certain that I knew exactly how to write, the best way to write and everything, okay? Um, one thing I like to, to share with my students is that three-part communications is not the only way to write. It may not be the best way to write, but it's the way we communicate at the SEA, and that's the way we're going to grade you. So it's just another way. And what we're trying to do is equip you with another tool for your toolbox here. And if you can leave, make yourself open to the, the new, new idea and, uh, and take the feedback from the FAs here, um, it may not be as, as awful as you may think it is, or it may not be as confusing as you think it is. It's very, very simple. Um, and sometimes it's so simple that um, it's easy to get get mixed up on it because it, it shouldn't be. Some people might believe that it's it's way too simple, and I can't believe it's that easy. Um, so let me show you this little nifty diagram that we came up with. All right? It, it this breaks three part communication down in the example of a sandwich. What we basically do with three part communication is that we're going to tell the reader what we're going to tell them in the introduction. And then in the body, this is part one, part two is the body, and this is where we're going to tell them all the stuff that we mentioned in the beginning. right? And then once we've covered it all, we're going to come down here to part three, the conclusion, and tell them what we told them. It's real simple. Tell them what we're going to tell them, tell them, tell them what we told them. One, two, three part communications. Right? So if you look at a sandwich, most people have probably experienced at least one sandwich in your lifetime. Uh, the bread is usually kind of thin, unless you're eating Texas toast or something like that. Uh, a, a sandwich is very thin. So your introduction is not going to be big and beefy. It's going to be a thin slice of bread that's made up of basically three sentences, an attention statement, a motivation, and an overview. Very simple. The very uh, basic and uh, simple introduction is three sentences long. The attention grabs the reader's interest. It's like a news headline. Think of something that you've seen maybe uh, on the news or on Navy Times or the Military Times. You know, you know, Command Master Chief gets fired because of fraternization. Right? That could be an attention getter. Your motivation is your whiff and what's in it for me. And it identifies the who, the what, and the why. So motivation can be as simple as this. Senior enlisted leaders, that's your who, should understand the importance of communicating in three-part communications. That's the what. Because it is an effective way to get a message across. And that's the why. The why has to pass the because test. If you if you don't can't it doesn't have to you don't have to use the word because in your in your WIFM, but it should pass the because test. You should have a reasonable you should be able to say why is why do people need to know this? Okay. And then your overview. Your overview presents the main points to the reader. These are the talking points that you're going to have in the body down here. The nice thing about the Senior List Academy is that we will often provide the required main points for you. For example, 
your ethics essay is background and impact. Those are your main points. Those are what you should have in your essay. If you have anything else besides background and impact, you're not following the, the PE. All right. So as you go back and review your essays, make sure you take a look at the, the PE to make sure that you have all the required main points and you're using them. And an overview statement can be as simple as this. This A covers the background and impact of the ethical case I'm talking about. Right? Or the ethical this this essay presents the background background and impact of a poor ethical decision. That is a very simple overview statement. Three sentences hey, all you need. Yep. Let me let me jump in. This is Bill. I, I would tell you that in uh, almost three years of doing this, um, the biggest problem that students find is, uh, especially as you said, is uh, is not following the uh, the main points that are outlined in the PE. So yeah. uh, make sure as you guys are are looking at this, you really understand and and put it in your outline. You know, here's what my my main point is, and label it the right way. Um, Really, the the only written work that you're going to do where you have free reign on the um, the main points is going to be your heritage essay. And frankly, I would I would just um, I I would tell you probably the best strategy to use on the heritage essay is um, either you know background or history, and then the the second main point will be heritage, and you're good to go. Um, but it, it's really up to you for that one. The rest of them are pretty pretty much lockstep, um, and and if you you don't follow them, um, your your FAs are going to give you some fairly significant feedback on why you didn't. So, uh. all right, thanks, Bill. All right, so let's now that we've got this done, these three sentences. That's one paragraph. That's the very beginning, your introduction paragraph, and we'll move to our first main point. Each main point. Uh, here's one thing I would like you to keep in mind: main points are nouns. They are not verbs. Main points are nouns. They are not verbs. So if one of your main points is discussion, this paper will cover the background and in a discussion, then your main points should say this background and discussion. It shouldn't say this paper will cover the background and discuss a problem, blah, blah, blah. Discuss is a verb. Discussion is a noun. So treat your main points like nouns. All right. So now that we've got our introduction written, we're going to move to our body. And if you see in the sandwich, we've got lots of toppings in the sandwich. And each one of those represents a main point. For the ethics essay, we have two main points. So let's just call it a bologna and cheese sandwich and leave the other stuff off. So our bologna is our first main point. And uh, so we will have a header saying bologna. And then, you know, for main point one. In this case, it'll be background for main point one. And then we're going to talk about the background of the case study that you read, that you picked. And then at the very last, the very end of that section, whether you use one paragraph or two to discuss it, doesn't, doesn't matter. You use your paragraphs to group your like ideas. At the very end, before you're going to move on to the next main point, you need a transition sentence. Transition sentence is going to be the last sentence in the, the, main, the first main point. Right? And your transition sentence is basically going to say, now that the background is covered, the impact will follow. It can be as simple as that. But you have to list each the required main points, the one that you're finishing with, and the one that you're moving to in your transition sentence. So if we had three main points, you would have a transition sentence between main point one and main point two, and then you have a transition sentence between main point two and main point three. There is no transition sentence between your last main point and the conclusion paragraph. Just keep that in mind. They go between the main points. They don't follow every main point. I hope that understands. Okay, so main point one, 
background, main point two, impact for your ethics essay, right? And you have a transition that says, now that, I'm fin now that the background is covered, the impact will follow, something to that effect, all right? You'll have to use a little wordsmithing and a little uh, uh, crafting, word crafting to make your transition sentence smooth, but make sure you include main point one and main point two in it, right? Sorry, don't want to beat that horse too much. All right, and then we're back to the bottom slice of bread. Remember, the bread is thin, so we'll keep it to three sentences. Uh, if you, it, it, at best, all right. That's the bet. That's about the, the simplest way to do it, and sometimes simple is elegant. When it comes down to it, this is where we're going to tell them what we told them. The summary. The summary. If you look at the summary, it's going to be basically a past tense version of your overview. This essay covered the background and impact of an ethical problem. So it's a past tense version of your overview. It's very simple. Your remotivation, you can almost copy and paste your motivation down here, and it's good to go. You don't really have to do anything else. That's it. That's your remotivation in its basic form. Just copy and paste it down here. All right. Once you get comfortable with it, you just move with it. As long as you're providing the who, what, and why, um, you can you can work on you know, uh, taking it up a level. But work on the very basics as you start off here. And your closing. Your closing is what leaves the reader thinking about your topic when it's all said and done. It kind of wraps up everything and, and leaves the reader thinking about it. So what's a good closing? Well, a good closing is a thought-provoking statement or a relevant quote. A relevant quote is not a quote from uh, that you found on Brainy Quotes that sounds inspirational. Um, but has nothing to do with your topic, right? Your quote should have something to do with your topic. And if you're going to use a quote, don't just paste a quote down there and put the citation in saying, you know, Bob Smith said this or Bob Smith in 2011, right? Don't do that. Try to set it up in a way that ties everything together. So you can say, Bob Smith talked about the importance of ethical decision makings when he said, and then put the quote in there. Right, and then make sure you you cite your sources according to to the APA manual. Right, by doing that, it kind of ties in uh, your topic and wraps it up in a nice little package with a bow on it. All right. So before I move on from this section, do any of the FAs uh, want to throw anything else in here? No. All right. Let's uh, let's back out of here for a second. Let's talk APA for a minute. So here you go. Uh, we're not going to listen to that video. All right. So this APA stuff you got. This Purdue Owl website is awesome for APA. Uh, I use it for my college stuff. Um, it's a great place to to find some resources. However, there are some distinct differences between you know, the full-blown APA that everybody uses and some of the modifications we've done uh, for the um, SCA itself. So let's go back to our writing resources, three-part comms, and look at this hand. If you're in the three-part comms menu of the writing resources, you're going to see this APA template in Word. And if we open this up, you're going to see an example of a paper written in the SEA APA format of running head. And note that your running head font is the same as as the body, the rest of your paper. Right? Sometimes you'll get in here, and your running head will be in Helvetica. And then you'll be typing it up in Times New Roman, and uh, your FA will take points off because it doesn't match. Right? It should be all the same size font as well. Everything should be Times New Roman 12. Right? So you have the running head, and then you have writing essay in APA, and the page number. Your title, your title of your paper, your name, Senior List Academy, class number, and color group. That's all you need. You don't need the date. You don't need to put your FA's name on there. Just this. All right. Follow this format. 
when you get down to the second page, you'll say, oh, that part that says running head is missing. It's not there anymore. And that's something from APA. The way you take care of that is if you go to your, if you double click in your header, you'll see that there's a box that says different first page. By doing a different first page, you can put this running head portion in this one. And you can scroll down here. And you can write just, just the running head down here. Okay. If you look in the APA manual, you also note that you shouldn't go beyond that with your running head. That includes the words running head. So if you've got part of your running head coming down here and below that, then it's too long. You need to, to shorten it up. Don't be afraid to abbreviate words in your running head. It's okay. We get down here. We have a three-sentence intro. It talks about it. We use head, headings for each main point. Hey, Dale. Yep. I have a question. Is an aspect required in uh, the paper? Is a what? The aspect. Aspect. I'm, I'm not following what aspect. Oh, the little part in the APA format that uh, you do a basic or overview of the whole paper? Yeah, no, we don't do that here. All right, okay, that's cool. a good question. That's a good question. It's a great question, um, especially for those that are very uh, uh, familiar with writing academic papers in APA style. Um, it's the abstract is what you were talking about. And we don't do an abstract. Sorry about so that. That's one of them. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, that's one of the modifications that we um, we've done, we've we've modified for our format here. All right, so no abstract is required. All right, you have your notice that you have your title of your paper at the top again. All right, and all this you'll find in your APA manual, which you can download. We have the the whole APA available for you. You can download and use it and refer to it. Okay, title is not bolded, but it's set up like a heading. Main point one is a bolded heading. All right, you scroll down at the end. Using proper headings will further focus the reader on the heart of the message. So you got headings here. All right, you got another heading. Come down here and look, you have a subheading which is all the way aligned to the left and bolded. All right. Now please note the headings themselves. They're centered on the left margin. All right. As you're going down you hit hit return at the end of a sentence, your paper will most likely automatically indent, like a paragraph. Well, if you center off the indent, your heading is actually going to be centered right about here instead of right here. Right? So make sure that you backspace and then center your headings, or they're going to be off-center. Right? Scroll all the way down, we have another transition, another heading. Right? You scroll down, scroll down talks about transition. This paper has a lot of main points. Right? And we come down here now at summary. Right? So this is your conclusion paragraph right here at the end. Notice that there's no heading here. If you read the APA manual, they say put a they might they, they say put a conclusion par you know like the, your conclusion heading here. We don't want to see the conclusion heading in the SCA APA format. Right? So make sure no conclusion heading before the last paragraph. All right, then we're going to have our three sentences again for our for our closing. And note, look at that. They've got a quote down here, whole nine yards. All right, so that is, basically, you can find that in the resources, APA template and Word. All right. Hopefully, by now, you've had a chance to go in and set up Word according to the recommended settings that were provided in week one. Um, That'll help with your grammar and your spell check and punctuation. All right. One thing I will give you a word of uh, advice about punctuation, commas and semicolons, uh, they, they should represent a natural pause in the sentence. All right. uh, semicolons tend to get overused because you want to write two sentences into one sentence. Um, don't be afraid to use a period and move and make it two sentences. Right? Commas tend to be overused, uh, used in places that they don't belong, and left out of places that they do belong. 
So make sure you go back and review punctuation, right? Uh, have somebody else look at your paper before you submit it just to check for things like punctuation because it can be, that could be a big, a big dink on you. And, uh, and it could be hey, Dale, let me throw in there. Um, I, I think if most of you looked around, you would probably find a senior enlisted academy graduate um, either at your command or on your base, and they would love to take a look at your paper and provide you some feedback on three part comms and, and the things that uh, that maybe you could improve on. So uh, don't don't feel like you're you're in the, the vast wasteland here. There's lots of folks that want to make sure that that you have a great experience at the Senior Enlisted Academy. Yeah, great point, Bill. And for you uh, non Navy students, for you partner service students that are coming in and doing this, if you do not have an academic member mentor uh, that's gone through the, the Navy Senior Lisa Academy, um, let us know. Let your FA know because we might be able to hook you up with a student from a previous class who is in the Air Force, or the Marine Corps, or the Coast Guard, or whoever, um, that we might be able to put you in touch with who would be willing to help you out. Okay, um, Or we'll hook you up with one of the, um, you know, uh, with another graduate that's close to your, your, close to where you live and work, and uh, might be able to hook you up. So we, we might be able to give you a resource if you can't, uh, if you don't have one yourself. So please uh, reach out to your FAs um, if you don't have an academic mentor, uh, uh, and you don't know if someone that could be your academic mentor. Reach out to your command master chiefs or your SELs and see if they can hook you up as well. All right, um, academic mentors can make a huge difference in your experience at the SCA and um, you know that frustration factor sometimes that you might might come across with dealing with workload uh, with school work with work work and with home home life um, they they're a good sounding board for you when you're feeling those frustrated days okay all right let's talk outlines for a minute you should uh, your if you read the PE, the PE says to submit your outline with your assignment per your FA guidance. That's the typical uh, verbiage that, that's off there, but read the PE to make sure that it's clear. Basically, you contact your FA. Or they should be giving you some guidance on where they want the uh, outline submitted and how they want them and when they want them. Uh, for example, I asked my group to submit them to me early so I can give them some feedback on their three-part comms to make sure they're tracking right um, to help be successful. Um, so if you haven't received that feedback, ask. All right, Make sure that you're clear on it. All right. but this Dale, is the outline. I also throw in, most of the FAs are, are going to ask you to submit your, um, your outlines to the file exchange, the, the group file exchange. And, and that does two things. First of all, it makes it um, very easy for the, um, the FA to access um, your work, but it also provides uh, everyone else in the group kind of an opportunity to take a look at how you've organized your paper and they can learn from it. And then probably the, the, the third most important thing is that it, um, it provides you the opportunity when you get in residence at the Senior Enlisted Academy to very easily um, pull up um, your outline for a particular paper because um, Dale hasn't told you yet, but um, you're going to be writing speeches from these papers and you're going to need those outlines. Yeah, good point, Bill. Thanks for that. Uh, uh, that as well. That's a, a good good bridge over to the importance of these outlines and the papers themselves. Um, so we build on each lesson here. Uh, the stuff that you learn online, we bring it over in-house and we carry it over there too. So um, everything that you are going to go through and learn while you're, in, you're online, um, it's going to carry over to in-house. We're going to switch from written communication to oral communications, all right? But we're not going to like hit you with something new. It's going to be familiar material. The speeches, that, you know, the, the papers that you're written are going to be turned into the briefs that you give. So it'll be uh, uh, a little bit of comfort level there for you, hopefully. All right, so make sure you get with your FA if they haven't already given you guidance about the outlines. Okay. All right, passive voice, that's a killer. That's any form of the word to be. 
uh, when you're using a verb form with the word to be in it. So, and then let's talk first person for a minute. And I have a resource that I'm going to pull up and I'm going to show you real quick. This is something I Googled and um, I share this with my group. Where is it? Come on. Here we go. I'm going to show you two resources that I got that are pretty handy and that you can Google and find these. So the first one I'm going to show you is the pronoun chart. All right, this, is, this shows you first person, second person. Let's see if we can zoom this in a little bit. Oh, wrong way. That was too big. All right. First person and second person. We don't want you to write in first person or second person. We want you to write in third person. So if you are using words like I, me, my, mine, myself, you, you, yours, yourself, uh, we, us, ours, ours, ourselves, that's all first and second person. And that is, um, you're going to get, you're going to get hit on it, right? We want you to write in third person, whether it's male or female. So he, she, him, her. Words like that. They, them, theirs, themselves. Right? It, it, it's not used. You know, there's some possession itself. So the you can Google pronoun chart and you can find like sixteen hundred different versions of this. Uh, and print that out and put it next to you while you're uh, writing your paper and make sure you're bouncing it off and using the right words. So that's one. Let me pull up the next one, which is a, you can type in passive voice chart as well. And this is a really good one that I I like to refer to because it gives you an idea of what active voice is, is what you want to write in, and passive voice, which is what you want to avoid. Right? So John writes a story that's active. A story is written by John. So basically you see how John got moved to the end of the sentence. And story got moved to the front, right? Is written, has been written. So been is a verb, is a, a form of the, the the verb form to be, right? So if you ever have be or been in there, you might want to ask yourself: being um, is this passive voice? Right? If you set up your word properly, uh, it it'll We'll give you one of those little squiggly lines underneath this and say, you know, to give you a, a hint of, hey, this might be passive voice, right? But Google this passive voice chart, and you'll find, again, a whole bunch of these that come in different shapes and sizes. Uh, you might find one that's useful. Print this out, have it next to you when you're writing your papers, and it could be very helpful. All right, so we talked about that. Let's talk about similarity for a minute. Every PE has a similarity index. And I'm going to go back to this. All right, let's go back to our um, major assignments and ethics essay. All right, once you upload it, right, it's going to come back and it's going to ask you, uh, you're going to look at it and see what it says about similarity. Let me see if I can find. Um, hang on a second, let me pull this over here for a second. An example of what that's going to look like. Be patient. I'm pulling up uh, an example so you can see what similarity looks like. And we'll go here.
All right, so you may see something like this when you go to pull up your similarity. All right, and it's going to be, this is what safe assign looks like when you pull a similarity report. It's going to tell you that it's 28% similar. And it's going to give you a list of, hey, these are all the places that were similar. You'll see some of these were, were marked out um, because they were down here and they were uh, uh, exempted. All right, but you'll have it, it will highlight sections of your paper that might be similar and might be similar to either somebody else's paper or a website where you got the information. So it's very important for you to cite your work according to APA. All right. The more you cite your work, the less it's going to show up as a similarity hit. Okay. And if it's cited properly and it still shows up as a similarity hit, we can say, okay, hey, this is this is just some sort of anomaly. Um, hopefully we don't get that, but uh, those anomalies, but similarity is important in that uh, uh, what similarity indicates is that um, it's not your original work. It actually is, it has an origin somewhere else, and um, you may be trying to claim it as your original words. All right, and the more the higher that percentage is, the more that points towards plagiarism. Okay, whether it's coincidental or whether it's intentional, it doesn't matter. If you're over similarity, you're going to get hit a minus 31 on your exam or your uh, your essay, and it'll be an academic failure. So that's the importance of uploading your paper into SafeAssign to check similarity before the 0700 deadline. So upload it as many times as you need to to make sure that your similarity is good and it's all checking out okay. Right. So, any questions before we move on to the next section? I know we talked about a lot here. Is there going to be any discussion on? Did we cover that question? References and requirements. That's a good question. So, I got a question saying, is there going to be any discussion on references and requirements? So, each PE gives you the 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 number of the minimum number of references. Okay. Your references are a separate page on the, uh, they have their own page in your essay per the APA format. Um, and they need to be set up in the APA format. Let's see if we can open up the example again. And we'll, pull, we'll go down to the uh, reference page. Here we go. So let's scroll all the way down to the reference page. So you see how the 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 conclusion paragraph is here, and then we space down all the way down to a new page for references. And the references, it's a non-bolded header that says references, and then they're listed alphabetically, and they're written in APA format. If you find a website that doesn't have a date, there should be a lowercase n d here for no date. Right. If you have a reference that has multiple authors, they should be listed by the how they're listed on the paper or the source that they're in, and that should be all, everyone should be included. Let me show you a really nifty tool that you can use. It helps with formatting your reference page. Okay, you see this menu item here says references. If you click on that, it opens up a new page, and you'll see that you have insert citation, manage sources. This is where you want to be. So the first thing you need to do here is you come over here to style, and you do the drop down here, and you make sure it's set to APA sixth edition. If you have an older version of Word it may still have APA 5th edition on there. And the differences are subtle, but there are differences between 5th and 6th edition. So make sure you're set to APA 6. All right. Once you get done with that, click on Manage Sources. And this is where you can build your reference list. All right. So let's just use one of these up here as an example. So let's say we want to make a new reference. And it is... Looks like it's a, a video file. 
So there's a drop down here that you can look and see if they have something for like a video file. Oh, look, there's a film. Let's see what the film says. So what's the title? So we can type the title in here. Oh, writing okay we don't know who the director is oh wait a minute we do it's K cage so we'll do if we hit edit we can put cage and the first name we'll just put the initial in here and hit add and hit OK and what year 2005 so we'll go 2005 Right, and then if we hit OK, wow, it's added to our reference list. All right, and we can just build one reference after another, and it'll fill this list up for us. Right, once we get our list built, we'll hit OK, and we'll hit close. And I'm just going to come down here and show you an example. We're going to so let's say we're making our reference page for the very first time. We're going to center this. Right. Now we want to make sure our reference page is formatted properly. Now we can do that manually, take some practice, but if we come here and we've got our reference list built, and we do our managed sources, we have a reference list here. Right. And we're going to use all those references, so we're going to go to bibliography. And all these are going to put it in the wrong format, so don't use any of these here. Come down here, hit insert bibliography. And as long as you got it underneath the reference, it'll still list all of them alphabetically, and it'll put them in the right format with the hanging indent like these. See, this is called a hanging indent. Boom, it'll put your reference list. It's a great way to organize your reference, reference list in the proper format, all right? So um, think about using that as a way to organize your reference page, all right? It's very handy. Close that. We're not going to save that. All right. Okay, let's move on. We've been beating this horse for a while. I'm going to turn it over to Bill, let him talk uh, about discussion boards for a little bit. So, Bill, still there? I am still here, Dale. If you want to um, uh, collect me as a presenter, I can pull up a, a couple of things on my screen. All right, let me do that. And... I very much appreciate you guys um, sticking with us on this. Um, so discussion boards are a little bit different um, from the written work that Dale talked about because, frankly, um, a lot of the, um, the work that is associated with three-part comms is already done for you. Um, the um, Frankly, the the intro and the conclusion are already complete. You know, the the intro really is the discussion question. Um, the um, and because we we put some limits on um, how much um, or how many words you can have in the post, we really don't want you to uh, um, to go through the whole. Um, the whole piece of three part comms of you know tell me what your your intro is you know your attention getter your um, your motivation and your um, your overview I'm going to assume that you know all of that and so um, so what what we really want you to do is um, frankly just get to the point and so um, can you guys see my screen here. I hope that's the, the, yeah. We got you now, Bill. Okay. Um, so I, I post this for my group, the the red group folks. Um, I, I give them a little heads up and I say, hey, look, um, here's what what I expect. Um, first of all, you need to know that the discussion board is really not as full featured as um, Microsoft Word in terms of picking up all of your grammar and your your spelling and that kind of thing. Um, Many students will type out their um, discussion board posts in Word and then paste them in. Uh, sometimes the formatting isn't quite so good, and I know that the folks that are on ships have some, some real issues with that. So what I would tell you is, um, um, as, I, as you kind of go into 
um, the board, pay attention to grammar, pay attention to sentence construction, pay attention to typos, and, and that, will, um, that will minimize the distractions from your post. Um, some students have, um, have a number of issues with that, and I'd, I'd really like for you guys to make sure that, uh, that you're, you're looking at that. Um, sometimes the, the word that you think is the right word, um, your, your spell checker won't catch, um, so, so you may need to read it twice just before you hit post. Um, one of the, the big things that I really highlight with the, the students that, that I deal with is, is this section where it talks about paragraphs. Um, some students really like to write in one very long paragraph that is just a, kind of a dump answer to what the question is. And frankly, that gets really hard to, uh, to, um, to read through. And so what I'd like you guys to think about is organizing your posts in multiple short paragraphs. And a paragraph is defined as three to five sentences that support one singular idea. So if you say, okay, um, generally what you'll have for these discussion board posts, and you guys saw with, with week one, um, is you'll have kind of two licks at the lollipop. You'll have um, one question that that really lends itself to um, some kind of research and then one that is really just based on, hey, what is my experience with this? So a, a way to organize that is to say, okay, well, I, I think um, these things, A, B, and C, about this for these reasons, you know, and then just kind of fill it in. Um, and each of those should be kind of a, a separate paragraph and really, there's no need to, to clean it up with a, an intro, and there's no need to, to finish it out with a conclusion. We'll just assume that, that you get the deal, right? So you say, I think this about that, and you, you go, you know, main point one, two, and three, and you're in pretty good, pretty good shape. Um, one of the things that I really highlight um, here is, um, for most of us, the thing that I would really like you to do when you're going into the, the secondary post, you've done your primary post, you've said, hey, this is what I think about this question that you posed to me, Senior Enlisted Academy, um, but now you're going to engage with, with one of your fellow group members, please use the quote button, not the reply button. It's going to make it so much easier, not only for your FA, which um, we strive mightily to give you great feedback, um, but it's also going to make it much easier for your group members because what you can do with that quote button <coughs> is quote the post that, that, um, that you're interested in, but cut down the quoted material um, all the way down to the salient point that you're really responding to. And so your post may say, hey, uh, you know, you, you cut it down to the, the, the point that the, the student made that said, um, hey, um, I, I really think that, uh, that China is out of the box because of, of X, Y, and Z. You just quote that little point, you know, China's out of the box for, for, um, for reason Z, and you say, you know what, I, I think that you're, you're just um, totally full of wool on that. And, and here's some research that I've found that, that refutes your point. Uh, oh, by the way, it's, it's totally okay to disagree with your, your group members, um, but do it in, in a nice way. Um, so and moving on to the, the rest of this, um, this is uh, pretty straightforward. A great post uh, expresses original thought with well-developed reasoning. Relevant and researched information to support opinions or arguments and is me mechanically well constructed. It reads well. Um, it, it's got some research behind it. A lot of times what we'll find is that students make a lot of assertions about what the truth is. And, and it may or may not be true. But I really don't know until you tell me what research you've done and then you properly cite it. And so, yes, um, uh, one of the questions that came up um, earlier was, do you want us to cite stuff in the discussion board? Absolutely. 
use the APA 6 in-text citations um, and provide us a, a list of references at the bottom. I'm not so concerned about the, the whole um, formatting of references. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as what you may do in your paper, but I want you to, to tell me where you got the, the stuff. And, and I want you to do the research. I want you to do some research that, that supports your opinion about a, a particular um, uh, particular point, whatever it may be. I think the, uh, this next point I've already gone over. Um, and so um, this is kind of, kind of the deal here. Um, the question di dictate, dictates the content of your response. What I really want you to do is um, answer the question. Read the question, answer the question, and I'll tell you that the, um, the discussion board posts that I have a real hard time with and that I, um, I, I tend to, um, to be relatively harsh with are the ones that either don't answer the question or they just kind of they skip along on top of the waves and they, they take a 10,000 foot view and they equivocate and they say, well, it could be, it could be A, but then B is probably okay too, you know. Um, feel free to, to take a stand, you know, and um, let's have a discussion about it. Um, toward the bottom here, this is, um, this is a big deal. If you look at the, the discussion board rubric, it talks about the, um, the number of words that are associated with each response. And what we want you to do for the primary response, which is your response to the question, hey, what do you think about this thing? Give us 200 to 250 words worth of your analysis, and then um, give us your references, give us, give us the, the citations, and you'll be good to go. 50 to 100 for the secondary pleas. And, and the whole reason behind that is what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to trump somebody's primary response with this manifesto of a thousand words about why you think they're wrong. Right? If you want to disagree, that's cool. Do that in a, in a polite way. Hey, I think you're off the base on this. Um, you know, I've, I've seen some other research that suggests something else and point to it. That's cool. You know, um, but really, what happens is when, frankly, when your your group members see a really long response to someone else's stuff, um, they just move on, right? They give it the, the too long, didn't read, and uh, and and we don't want that. We want everyone's um, viewpoint to get seen. Um, so if we uh, if we look into what's going on next week, I know everyone is probably everyone has has already done the the week one stuff. Week two is coming up. Um, so when you look at um, at this post, and it says, okay, um, here's the the what the the how and the why. Senec talks about communicating the why. Um, this kind of of question really asks you for a personal example of. Uh, what you've seen and what you've done, and really uh, not much citation is uh, is required or desired. If you um, if you look at the other question in the, the thread, um, it really lends itself to um, a, 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 some research that that would support the the position that you're gonna you're gonna make. It says, hey, you know, let's talk about dime. Um, during the Arab Spring, this is what happened, and so how does how does social media impact dime? I, I would also tell you that um, that social media impacting dime is not about um, um, presidential elections or or social media or any of the things that um, that you may be thinking of. You know how awful computers are. Um, it really is related to a nation's ability to impact others. So think about that as you, you make your responses. Um, let me see. Let me click back to the go to meeting and see if there was any other um, questions. Let's Bill, there's a. Hey, hey, Bill. This is Dale. Yeah. 
Hey, there is a question on here asking, do we need to explain our answers in third person? And, and um, so here's the the answer that I would I would uh, give you. Um, generally, we would expect your post to be mostly in the um, the third person, but primarily that would be for the post that, that requires some research. When when I ask you a question and I say, hey, in your experience, what about this, that, or the other? I expect you to respond in the first person, right? The first person is, yeah, I saw this and I saw that and this is what happened and this is what I did. And that is perfectly fine. Um, and I, I don't, I don't think there's any FA that would uh, that would have a hard time with that. We tend to not spend a, a whole lot of time um, uh, thinking about that. What we do look for is the the minor. Uh, well, first of all, we look at word counts. Uh, we look at um, minor typos and, and inability to, to kind of um, convey the thought. You know, if you've got real big problems with, uh, with paragraph and sentence construction, we're going to give you some feedback on that. If you go way over, um, we're going to give you some feedback on that. So, All right, Dale, I'm going to throw it back to you, my brother. All right, thank you. All right, everybody can see my screen now, I hope. All right, so hopefully we covered all of the discussion board stuff, the high points. Um, we're going to wrap things up. I know we went kind of long tonight, but I appreciate y'all hanging in there. Hopefully you got a lot out of this. Let's talk about a little bit of keys open, the keys to success here. And I talked about a few of them throughout here. I think, think Bill and I both kind of hit on these. Um, number one, be open-minded. And that's not just uh, about... Um, the prospect of using three-part comms as a new tool, but be open-minded, be open to the new experiences that you have here at the SCA. Um, be open to the uh, um, the wealth of ideas and experiences that your your classmates have to offer, and that you can offer them. All right, so it's a great opportunity to come together and kind of mind meld with everybody. Number two, read the assignments and the practical exercise. Cannot overemphasize this. All right, uh, most of the common common mistakes that that we come across, uh, we can attribute to didn't pay attention to the PE or you know a specific thing in the pit and then the practical exercise. It gives you everything you need to know. All right, pay attention to deadlines. I can't tell you how many times somebody has called an FA and said, hey, I thought the, uh, the the quiz was due at the end of the day, or I didn't pay attention because I thought it wasn't due until next week. It all has to do with going back to that calendar. All the deadlines are on the calendar. And typically, our deadlines are either 0700 Eastern Standard Time or 2359 Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you check your assignment and when it's due, and look at the calendar for the next week to make sure you're not overlooking something that's coming due. All right. So you need to communicate early and often, and this is especially important to those that might be traveling or going underway, where your connectivity is limited. All right. If you let your FA know ahead of time that you know if you're on a submarine and you just have no connectivity while you're underway, um, they might be able to to work out something with you. Right, I can't tell you that uh, uh, making any promises that they will, but if you communicate early, uh, at least you have uh, they know what's going on. Right, and uh, we like to say this in the Navy: use your mess. Um, class 205 is your chief's mess for the next 13 weeks. Right, and for our non-Navy partner service students, you're part of the mess now. Right, the mess is uh, you know bounce your ideas off each other. You know, peer review, get you know, share your paper with them, um, put it in the file exchange, you know, email it, 
you know, let, let your, your peers help you out and you help your peers out, right? We're all in this together and we should all be focused on, uh, you know, the success and that's what we want to do. And uh, last thing, and this is when you start getting towards week nine and you're getting ready to come in house. Um, if you have some sort of physical issue that is going to limit your ability to PT when you come in house, make sure you bring documentation that covers it. If you're limited duty, you're light duty, um, if you have some sort of restriction, make sure you bring the medical paperwork to us with you so that our corpsman when we go through the screening process on your day one check-in when you're come in residence, that you have it, right? You may be healthy today, but come week eight, you're out running and you sprain your ankle um, and you forget to bring the documentation, uh, that can be problematic, okay? So again, I saw Mary, I think it was Mary, who put up a thing in the chat about communicating early and often. When in doubt, reach out to your FA. We are here to support you. We are here to try to help you be successful in this course. All right. And we can't help you if we don't know the, the issues or the questions. So just ask. That's what we get paid for. All right. Um, any questions before we uh, wrap this up and go to bed? All right. Well, thank you for attending. And this has been recorded, so once we get it uh, converted and saved, uh, we'll upload it and we'll send a link out to all the students, to everybody. So um, share that with your groups so they can uh, take advantage of it as well. Have a great night and a good week.